This is Wilinski Magazine, we're coming back with fresh feature. Within our interviews we always try to inspire and maybe get you kind of idea of that you can do things yourself as well. Matthew, for those who maybe don't know you yet, could you describe yourself? I can call myself now an entrepreneur who always wished to be one. Uh, a guy, a father with two kids and a cat and a beautiful wife. Within the job you like come from the background of like having this regular nine to five job, right? I'm coming from a very much of a background where I was always injected with an idea of having a stable Monday to Friday job because this is what my family always had. It kind of was running from generation to generation. And I believe ever since I was 15, I always felt that Monday to Friday is not me. You know, I like to work nights, I like to work weekends, three, six, five, 24, seven. Do you think like individuals in general have that desire kind of in them? Absolutely, every single human being inside themselves have the, the, the guts, the power to, to create something and, and do something more than just to work for someone. The kind of maybe the scariest part is like that you actually maybe say, okay, I quit the job I, and I try to do the thing I love. How did you do that transition? That's the thing. Um, that is the scariest part actually to say, okay, I'm, I'm done with Monday to Friday or, or whatever. And I actually now gonna go out there, I'm gonna get it, you know, and I'm gonna do what you said, what I'm gonna love. So the passion of doing something which you love and the actual the, the job which you do, which you love, this this is the key. You know, you have to find yourself. It took me, it took me, I think, nearly 27 years to find. <laughs> I'm not that old, though, but it, you know, I was 27. But actually, I think I realized, okay, this is me. I should go that way. And then, I think I realized two years later that no, it actually it's not me, I have to do something else. Mm. So it's, it's, I was doing what I, what I was loving to do, and then I realized that, but wait a minute, I always wanted to be that type of a, you know, you do business, the business is running, so we learn how to work, then we run, and then we move to another business, you know, and you have a, a palais, you know, of, of, of things, what you do throughout the day. So within this entrepreneurship, <clears throat> What would you think like the, the best lesson you, you, you learned? The best lesson you learn is to, you, you need to learn how to fail, you know? I failed so many times, so many times that it's, it's incredible. It's, you know, it's just very similar with like sales, you know, like, uh, I mean, I, I did some property, uh, I, I did uh, cold calling and all of that. It's, it's how you take the no, you know? It's the same, same with entrepreneurship, for example, if like through the week, uh, that's what I'm saying, I'm a little bit, mental and thanks to my team that they they accept me the way i am it's you know you sometimes you go through dozens of ideas you know and you say okay you know now we're gonna take the capital and we're gonna take the resources and we're gonna start and then you rethink you know and then you go to the shower then you think in the shower <laughs> and then you eat and you think and you live with that idea and actually at the end of the week you say it will not work mm. so it's actually the, the the thing of learning the failure you know because in the business, I believe, and actually in the whole life as well, it's you, you can try a hundred times, you know, if one gonna turn successful, that, that is what the entrepreneurship means. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think the most of the time is occupied by this recruitment agency of yours. So basically, yeah, so the, the, the whole thing, um, how me, how I raised the, the capital was, uh, we went through, uh, so we started the company and then we realized that how many people were actually into it. And then we, we were said like, okay, you know, the country, Malta is, is in a huge lack of, of, of staffing. So then I was like, okay, we should actually shift from normal limited company to actually licensed recruitment agent. So that having a license, then you can actually approach big businesses, you know, big companies as Malta and offer our services. So yes, rec recruitment actually allowed me to raise some capital and then shift to other business. Mm. And how long this business is working for? So basically we, we got a license in 2020. Mm. So 2020, it was end of it, 2021, 2022, yes. So if I ask you like how many like job opportunities you found for, for people? Oh my goodness, like we, so in WFDM, we, I believe we recruited now over 1000 people on our books. 
how many opportunities we have provided um, only through WFDM, I believe you're talking close to a couple of thousand now. So it's it's been on a raise, even taken into account COVID. So COVID obviously really slowed down many industries. However, we took a turn and got a chance. I can say we got a bit lucky. I mean, uh, we started working with, uh, with food delivery companies and then we shifted a little bit as well to cab services. Then we met quite a few companies who struggled uh, to have drivers as well for, for these, these type of uh, industries. Therefore, we, we helped them as well. That really kind of boosted our company up. And then actually as well, we said, we said what, about, what about the companies who actually deliver daily food, mm -hmm. uh, milk, you know, all, all the what community actually is in the need. And then we met quite a few companies and they said, look, we, we're all actually in the need of drivers. And then since we were foc since we were focusing on logistics because it was with food deliveries and all of that i said like okay um actually we do have people for for the big trucks we have we have people for smaller trucks for the vans so we kind of even even extended our kind of let's say recruitment and operation to to provide drivers for for our communities you know for 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 the companies which actually deliver uh, fresh bread on a daily basis milk daily goods uh, as into supermarkets and all so we kind of shifted to that matthew i think your what you do it provides big value is there any like collaboration between you and the government government uh, you, we have to understand the government is very busy overall we're not the only one who's actually providing you know uh, this is how to say a economical cycle you know so that the country is growing that the people are coming renting apartments going to the supermarkets we're not the only one so we we believe that you know, we obviously have to be treated the same as everyone. Not to mention that um, WFDM, we, we were the first one to actually start working with the food deliveries and not to mention that we're the biggest one. So we're not asking for anything extra. However, we believe that during the pandemic, we, we were the backbone of uh, many businesses in Malta. I'm talking about restaurants, I'm talking about the groceries, which actually we kept them alive. You know, because if not the food delivery companies, if not us, we are the ones who are doing the hard work. We actually helped many businesses to, to be alive. Um, now, do we get help from the government? Um, we don't get anything else more than other companies. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we fully understand that the companies are reaching out that, you know, if, even me, you know, I would like to kind of express that uh, to be an entrepreneur in Malta is not to be an entrepreneur like five years ago. It is, it is becoming extremely difficult. You know, at the moment, WFDM is employing in Malta, in our, on our books, in our company, we're employing over 200 people on our payroll. In Cyprus, we have another 60. However, if we would be getting uh, visas issued, I'm talking about third world nationals because some of the jobs, um, just how to say, they not not designed, but we are, how to say, focusing on the terrible nationals because they have more exposure, for, let's say, on the motorbikes line. So if we would be getting more visas, at the moment, we are still in the shortage of 600 jobs. And I'm talking not about only WFDM. We're talking about our clients and very big names in Malta. So obviously, there would be, if there would be a better help, we would be a bit more in the position to expand in other businesses as well, because WFDM is forming a group of companies. And we would be able even to, to how to say, to increase the, the, the national inside product as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the economy, I would, I would say, would even strive more if the processing of, let's say, visas, work permits would be a little bit fast. However, we understand that this is done not by robots, you know, it's done by human beings, same, same as us. I think in general, you deal with like a lot of people on a daily basis. Will you have time anytime soon to start like a new project or anything like that? So, yes, yes. Uh, sometimes people do ask me if I sleep. I do sleep sometimes. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, yes, WFDM, basically, we have uh, just recently accrued 35% of shareholding of a business based in Lithuania. This is something what I was looking for a solution for myself, for my business, because I do meet a lot of people and I do exchange a lot of uh, business cards. And 
I had businesses in the past where it was very much environmental kind of orientated and environmental friendly. So business card for me, especially the printed one, is a little bit of a waste. And especially like me, I, I get a business card and what do I do? I take the number and I throw it out. So I was looking for a solution and I found this kind of partly tech business, which is a new era business card. So this is something what we accrued. I was super happy and we're bringing that to Malta as well. So this is this is one business which is being like brought from outside to Malta. And then for the inside pro products as in the economy, yes, WFDM has established quite a few other businesses, which we'll be speaking next year a lot more. But that has to do as well mostly with the services provided to our community. Mm -hmm. So we, we take a bicycle, you know, and then we say, okay, you know, can we make this bicycle a bit better? I mean, I believe this is the very old way of, of initiating and starting the business, just basically making it better. But it feels like uh, you know what you're doing, the, the right people at the right place. Is there any like sort of finish line at some point? Or once you start business, you always kind of want to do new things? Look, the way, the way we start the business and the way I think business is, like I never had an opportunity to, to actually have freedom, you know, to, to think about business, to start business. And, I do find people who are in the same position where I was long back. So what, what I do is I offer a project to the person who is capable of delivering. So I'm kind of making him a partner. So me, I'm utilizing my contacts, my, my capital, my as well and entrepreneurship ideas and all of that. So basically, is there a stop? No, because I will always be investing not not to how to say business, but I'll be investing to people. So, no, for sure not. There's mm -hmm. so much more in Malta and so much more in the world which can be started and or can be redone better. And then I wish to everybody else who is watching to have boss like you if they have <laughs> the job. We always seek to invest to the right people because it's not it's not that you invest to the business. Business is people. Without without my team, I'm nothing. Mm. You know, that's, I, I tried to run WFDM uh, for, I believe it was like, I, I was running it alone for six months until I reached the point that was, we had 50 employees, we, I had. <laughs> and I said, you know what, what I'm doing? Like, actually I need people behind, I need a team behind. Um, and then we started, started growing. I mean, at the moment in, in Malta office, we have 16 people running the you know, behind the scenes, the, the, the whole operation. In the note of finish, if I could ask you for people who maybe seek advice, like what would be like the best advice you ever received that helped you the most? The best advice is uh, received. <laughs> to be honest, I read a lot of books when I was 16. That was a bit of a while ago. But the best advice was, I believe, not to give up, you know, and just, just dream, work hard, I never give up. That's what I follow. And I, I'm still following the same. Because mm -hmm. I said, failing, I think to fail is actually to gain. If you fail, you gain. You know? I think that is the success. If you fail more, you gain more, and then success comes its own way. Yes, yeah, but I mean, what we see with the experience, hardly unlikely would be you start your first venture and it's success is the big hit. It takes a lot, this kind of grinding, to actually make it happen. Yes, I mean, look, uh, no one was, ne no, no one and uh, ever brought anything, you know, on the plate and said, here you go, you know, that's a success formula. No, mm. I mean, even with like, let's say food deliveries, when I started, I started it from Mexico. I was, I was, I got literally stuck in Mexico. It was my honeymoon with my wife and I got a call and they, they said, listen, we start tomorrow. And I had restaurant business, which was going okay. And um, I, I bought five bikes over, over the phone, literally, and I said that this, this is it. I'm just gonna try it. I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And then through through some time, through like grinding, working hard, and I realized, okay, do you know what? Maybe it might gonna be a hit, because food business, food deliveries in Malta before was a disaster. I remember ordering pizza and waiting for two and a half hours. Yeah. I never br drove a bike in my life. You know, I, did, I didn't know much. But then I got back to Malta and I started actually going through and trying to understand, you know, where this business can take me. I worked 20 hours a day. It was like Monday to Sunday job. And then I realized, okay, you know, maybe, maybe it's worth of trying. And then I yeah. borrowed some money from family, you know, and here we are, you know, at the moment, our fleet is over 350 motorbikes and 
and 20 cab cars. So, and we're still growing, we're still going strong. Mm. Fantastic. So, yes, I think you will be huge inspiration, not only for us, but for many who will watch. You are really self-made success and definitely we will follow for more. Thank you. Thank you for your time.